The views and opinions expressed by the host and the guests of the Wild West Crypto Show are just that, views and opinions. We do not give financial advice. We highly recommend anyone considering entering into this very volatile market seek the advice of a financial advisor and never risk more than you would risk on a roll of dice in Vegas. The Wild West Crypto Show is designed to entertain and inform our audiences. Thank you for tuning in. Wild, wild west. The wild, wild, wild west. west. Folks, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show from San Antonio, Texas on our home station, KTSA. I'm Drew. I'm Brent. And I'm Alex. And folks, let me tell you something. In the At the speed of crypto and everything else, it's been really kind of a funny couple of weeks. We were talking about it a little bit off air that, uh, you know, kind of where things are. So oh, we're yeah. going to be checking in around the planet. Of course, we'll be talking to the hardest working man in crypto, Mr. Bruce Porter. Bruce Porter. Yeah, he's actually out in Reno right now at the Blind Veterans of America annual convention. And uh, wow. he's introducing the program through Global Boost that we're going to be doing where people donate their cell phones. Right. And then we're going to have veterans refurbish them. And then we'll deploy them out where people can either buy them in third world countries or sure. stuff. Or what, what, you can be- sponsor them. What better than That's nice. donating your phones? Yeah. Veterans are going to get a job refurbishing them. Right. They go out and they make money for, for Global Boost, who then circles back around and does the blind hockey. That's exactly. There you go. I mean, See, you know, yeah. hockey, veterans. I mean, yeah. I'm nothing more American I want, than I want that. I learn how to refurbish a phone. How do I get in on this? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun skill. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I, I stopped yesterday and I've got a meeting with them next week. There's a group out of uh, Bernie. Texas, right here by where we live. And they have got, they're the largest refurbisher of cell phones in the world, and they take cell phones in, and they deploy them to third world countries. So what we're going to do is kind of piggyback on some of their successes and everything else to go in, see if they'll train our veterans for us that through some kind fun. of a program, refurbish the phones, and send them out. And kind of the bottom line in this whole thing is, I mean, it, it's like Brent was saying, it lifts several different things. Oh, yeah. So when we put these out, and folks, what you'll be able to do is go to the Global Boost website. And let's say that, you know, you don't need a phone, you don't want to do that, but you want to put somebody in business in Venezuela. They sure. need it, right? You can go and buy one of these phones and have it sent to someone, and then all of a sudden it's loaded up with a mining app, and it'll be able to mine not only Global Boost, but about 20 other cryptocurrencies that have used the Yes script. Do we know if this is uh, like a merge mining, like it'll mine all of them at the same time, or you have to pick one for it? To no, mine? it automatically the picks merge, the we, best Merge one. mining exists. It'd be amazing if it was merge mining like huh. 20 coins at the same time. You will have to look and check that out. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you do Bruce, that, the phone listen. won't make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's good. Yeah. Well, well, you know what's interesting? And actually, my son, Jason, Jason's in the house. Jason's having, in the uh, house. Jason's in the house. Back in the country. I know, back in the country. He just came, uh, last place was Columbia, and I was talking to him about this initiative, what we're going to be doing, and he said, the people down there need it. Oh, you yeah. know, he's oh, especially, yeah. he talked to several folks that came out of Venezuela that are literally trying to do anything, send money back just to feed the family, oh. you know. So this will be, it'll be a great initiative. Look forward to doing that. And then he'll talk a little bit about, we are going to... Uh, Wild West Crypto Show, Blockchain Media Group, Global Boost. We're pulling some people together, and we're going to do a conference in Washington, D.C. When? So it'll be <laughs> it'll be the end of November. It'll be November 30th, mm. December 1st. That's good timing. It's, it's perfect timing because actually the you know the election will be over, so people, all the mad and all that stuff will not be as mad. I didn't think about know? that, but that's a good point, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, they'll still be in session, so it'll be right before they go back to break. And for us doing this in the nation's capital... And we've, you know, Bruce has got some contacts there. We have contacts there. I'm going to see if I get Ted Cruz yeah. to come on over and, you know, yeah. just talk about, he may not know anything about cryptos, but we'll teach him. Sure. You know, especially since he tried out for one of the voices of the Simpsons. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Did he really? Yeah, he really did. Why did oh he get the gosh. job? He has a good voice for TV. Well, he has a, he has a face for the Simpsons, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, a voice for animation. Yeah, he's got, yeah. Yeah, really, he's got, got a face for characterization. He does. Got. That's it. That's it. But anyway, we should be able to get some real powerful folks. And what's setting us apart with this conference Unlike so many of the conferences, and we all agree there are too many of them, really, and a lot of them don't do well because there are too many, but it's going to be 99 bucks a ticket. That's great. If you buy with cryptos. Oh, now that's the Earl Scheib, ninety nine ninety nine. You know, it. get your car painted for ninety nine nine. I'm showing my age here. Well, well, I know, but I did one of those paint jobs. You know? <laughs> well, no, no, no. I mean, that's amazing. That's about the cheapest I've ever seen a convention ticket uh, ever. Yeah, and, really. and, our, and our goal in this is the people that really need newbies into this, and especially all the people we reach on terrestrial. If you don't know anything about crypto, you're not having to sign up for a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred bucks for something that you may not even have an interest in. True. 
So with us doing doing this for 99 bucks, really kind of get the burden of the conference on the exhibitors and everything else, and then pull as many people. We're expecting two to 2,500 people at this conference, and you know we're gonna, we'll pull it off like we do everything else. Yeah. So yeah. if you're out there listening to us, come come see what we really look like. Come to DC. That's and, right. Uh, and come to the show. Ninety nine bucks. Ninety nine bucks. Ninety nine bucks. I mean, nine ninety nine. Yeah. Out of your I mean, mind? that's a that's a nineteen seventies Earl Shy paint job price right there. <laughs> that's it. Do, do we have dates so we can order tickets now so we can save on that as well? <laughs> well yeah. I, it won't get much cheaper than ninety nine yeah. bucks. Now let me tell you, if you do pay with fiat currency, it'll be one hundred and fifty bucks. Oh, I meant for the plane. So, Got to oh, oh, know the date oh, yeah, so I can get yeah. that plane ticket cheap. <laughs> yeah, the conference will be on the 30th and the 1st. It'll awesome. be two days, and it'll culminate, as you guys can imagine, Bruce Porter style. He's going to have a VIP party out there with the, <laughs> you know, at the end of this thing. Locked so it'll in. be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so what else we got going on? Well, speaking about our terrestrial stations, we need to welcome all of those that are out there. You bet. All the new listeners. We have a new station started this week in St. Louis. St. Louis. In the outskirts of St. Louis, the Show Me State. The Show Me. My little brother was born in St. Louis. Is that right? They don't claim him, but he was (laughs) born in St. Louis. So he's not actually a Texan. <laughs> no, a, in fact, you know what? There's none of us that were born in the state of Texas. Is that right? I did Arkansas, not that. two from Tennessee and one from Missouri. Oh no, kidding! There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, new new station in St. Louis. Obviously, we have the three stations in L.A., Phoenix, and Salt Lake. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And through uh, C Suites. We've, we're on a bunch of other terrestrial stations, and we're trying to figure out which ones they are. So, actually, if you're hearing us on a station that we haven't mentioned, shoot us an email so we know where else we're yeah. showing up. Yeah, yeah. Let, let us know uh, where, you're, where you're hearing us and when we're playing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do that for us. And then, you know, for a lot of you folks that don't know, this is a two-hour show. And if you happen to only carry it with the station you listen to only carries an hour of it, you can go to our website or you can go to SoundCloud or iTunes or any of that stuff. And well, no, you need to call them up and tell them you want half your money back because you're, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. only getting half the show. Yeah, okay. there you go. There you go. Oh, but that's right. It's on the radio, so you didn't pay anything for it. So. <laughs> exactly. Call them up and say I want both hours. <laughs> now you yeah, can do yeah, that. You can do that. Yeah. Get them to pick up both hours. Customer demand. So, And if you happen to have a – you listen to a radio station, like Britt said, call your favorite radio station and say, hey, I've heard of these guys. Get them on the air here, you know, because what we're talking about is for everybody. Oh, sure. You know? yeah. oh, well, you know, the funny thing is, I was, as you know, I'm going out buying used doors, buying a bunch of stuff for the for the world headquarters of, uh, of yes. Edison Coin and yes. Wild West Crypto Show and a bunch of other stuff we're into, and uh, and was in a taxidermy shop picking up some taxidermy. Yeah. And uh, and they, I said something about the show. I got to go to their show, and they said, oh, talk to the guy in the second bin, man. He's a Bitcoin nut, you know, and so... <laughs> So sure enough, I go in there and start talking to the guy. He's like going, man, I'm trying to explain to them. They just don't understand the blockchain and the distributed ledger. And I, you know, I mean, uh, and so he and I, we, we, we uh, yeah. uh, clicked rings and, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, did the secret handshake of Bitcoin and, and uh, visited for a minute. And then <laughs> the I left. crypto so, crypto yes. handshake. But yeah. I guarantee you, we got a new listener because I told him Saturday, in San Antonio, Saturday at uh, 8 o'clock. Yeah, so does this yeah. mean I can get my dog taken care of when he dies for crypto now? Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> that, that, guy, that guy will do it. Yeah. I guarantee you, that guy will do there it. There you go, there you go. I'm still so trying to for, convince my girlfriend. For some of you <laughs> folks out there that live in parts of the country aren't sure what a taxidermist is, you know, because it sounds like it could be stress on your dermis. Or yeah. taxing. What they do is is it's it's where us, us hunters go out there and whatever. Memorialize. Is, yeah, we memorialize Memorialize whatever it is. the life of the animal we just took. That's exactly right. Or, you know, I mean, I tried to get my wife uh, when her poor first little cat you know, passed on. I right. said, "Hey, do you want to have her on the mantle?" And she said, "In what form?" That doesn't so go very that. well. I tried I that with my wife on the first dog, and it just, it just, phew, yeah. It I'm right just there with dying. you. I keep asking because I'm like, "My dog's gonna die soon," and I really want this. And she's like, "Do not put this." Isn't that dog funny? In the All house. the guys want their. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of like John Wayne. You it's know, he had that horse that he, you know, he. Uh, He's been with you for 15 years. Well, it's gonna be and, weird without him there. You know yeah, I mean? and part of the deal is my wife and I had this conversation. If you lock <laughs> your dog in the trunk, your cat in the trunk, and your wife in the trunk, yeah. When you open the trunk with There's, your wife, you've had it. Yeah. When you open your the trunk with a cat in it, it's out of here. Probably scratch you on the way. You open the trunk with your dog in oh, it. I'm so glad to see. I'm so glad to see. I'm so glad to see. Exactly. You. Exactly. Yeah. That's why us guys like our dogs. You know. <laughs> anyway. So, so anyway, if you're out there Louis, listening yeah. to us, you know, talk to your local radio station, and also go to the wildwestcryptoshow.com, and you can see the other half of the show that you don't get. Right. If you're getting a one hour show, plus you can go to the back shows and learn a lot of the things that we taught everybody in the first. Uh, 
in the first season. You you bet. Yeah, and, and now actually we're just starting our third season. I don't know if Episode it started twenty eight or, or something like that. Yeah, now. I think twenty nine. Yeah, we're we're ticking on up there. It's hard to believe. You know, the speed of crypto, time flies when you're having fun. And so, folks, listen, the, talking about a little bit about the second hour, today's second hour, we're going to talk about the current state of cryptocurrency, the fear, the reality, and all that. So you're going to want to catch that because crypto has been ticking down, and we were just talking about this. We're getting messages from all our peeps out there going, oh, my gosh, my portfolio, even Ranger Bob. Yeah. Said, hey, I'm underwater in my portfolio. Yeah. I said, just hang on, buddy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hold your nose. It'll come back up. You know, right. you know, still to this day, the entire year, and I hate to be the guy that's like, but, but I mean, to keep it real simple and sweet, I always tell people, and I mean, you can use any chart and graph, but the easiest for me is just to go to Coinbase.com and just go to the, the one year chart of Bitcoin. And you'll see, I, I looked at it two days ago and we're still like 200% above where we were last year. Yeah. So everybody that's Oh my gosh, we're losing everything. The world is crashing. I'm like, just, but if they look at last year, we're yeah. up across the board. Doesn't matter what you're looking at. Last year, we're higher than we were. But in the so, world of investing, you're only as good as your last trade. It's, and that's, that's, the, that's, that's the problem. It doesn't matter if you have 198 straight winning trades, you have one duck. Yeah. Exactly. And the boot birds come trying out. To do daily well, and trades. That's, that's where you talk about in your oh, schoolhouse yeah. segment the oh, plow horse and the race horse, right. folks. That's the right. plow horse and the race. Hey, so folks, listen, when we come back, we're going to have the hardest working man in crypto, Mr. Bruce Porter, on. And then we've got Larry Castro of Stealth Grid is going to be on to talk about the golf tournament that was in San yes. Diego a couple of weeks ago. Then we have the schoolhouse segment. So, folks, stay <laughs> tuned. This is Wild West Crypto Show. We'll be back in two minutes. Hey, folks, welcome to the Wild West Crypto Show, and I am with the hardest working man in crypto, Mr. Bruce Porter. Bruce, let me tell you something. I, I hand it to you, my man. You find a way to travel literally all over the world. Then I'm talking to you yesterday, and you're taking the kids to the water park. And you, you, Do you ever sleep? Well, you know, I, I well, first of all, we are live. Uh, I'm coming to you from Washington, D.C. And, you know, I, I'm actually known for uh, a saying. I didn't, of course, come up with it myself, but I'll sleep when I'm dead. Uh, but I'll tell you what, as I pulled into uh, JFK, uh, I've been losing my days. I guess it was two days ago, and uh, it's flown all night from Reno and everything else. I'll tell you what, sometimes it, it is uh, it gets you tired and all. But, you know, where we are going and where we have to go right. uh, requires this type of level of energy and this yeah. type of level of commitment. And, you know, you tying it in, you know, of course, with the vets. I mean, that's that's what it takes also with these uh, visually impaired and these disabled people that we're helping. Uh, that type of commitment, uh, you know, to really make things happen. Next week, I'll be teaching uh, an autistic hockey camp that I've been teaching for over a decade at the Capitol Center. And, um, you know, it's something that's close to my heart, helping these people and to be able to use blockchain and leverage the Wild West Crypto Show, Blockchain Media Group, and Global Boost. In order to do that, it's huge. We have some big, big, uh, big events coming up, guys. I mean, you, you, you got to come. They, they, these things, these things are awesome for everybody, and they're going to make you feel good too because we're helping a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you're at the Blind Veterans. It's their annual conference in Reno, right? That's right. And, and, uh, and you, like you said, you've been doing this, and, and the Blind Veterans hockey, hockey thing kind of came out of you teaching the autistic kids, right? That, that's absolutely correct. Uh, a couple of years ago, you know, the Blind Veterans Association is about five minutes uh, from my house right here in Old Town, uh, Virginia. And, uh, you know, they, I, of course, I'm an Army brat. For those of you that don't know, you know, you to Bruce say, oh, where are you from, Bruce? Well, I'm kind of the East Coast, right? You know, yeah. and although I was, dad was stationed out in Alameda in, in Utah when I was really young. But, um, yeah, they called me up uh, because of my history working with uh, disabled hockey and with these autistic kids. Uh, you know, I, co I coached. Coach Trotz with Caps Coach Trotz, who's now not Coach Caps Coach. But anyway, I coached his son with Downs uh, for years now, um, you know, at, the, at this camp. So they called me up and they asked me if I wanted to take on this initiative uh, with blind hockey, which is a new sport a couple years ago. And I jumped. I jumped at it. Um, and at this point, uh, we've started about six teams. I started, you know, personally going out to these places um with that initiative and and now we're really just funding we're really funding this ourselves with global boost and with blockchain and have been for a while uh throwing about five or six events a year i can go down some of them it is totally totally awesome changes these guys lives folks i mean yeah. if you're visually impaired if you're blind there is no game that you can play 
uh, that is anything, you know, as fun as hockey. And you can imagine you're surrounded by these walls and the walls are creaking the noise in and we have that big loud puck, ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a like that. And of course, I'm on the ice directing the guys and uh, it is totally awesome. I took the guys to Kiev. Uh, we went to Kiev earlier in the year um, as, as well as uh, some of the other events, Lake Placid and, and whatnot like that, Central Park. Um, it, is, it is really, really cool and uh, really part of the whole Global Boost uh, initiative. Even uh, from the beginning, four years ago, when we started the Global Boost Bar Chain, it was always to help the veterans and uh, help the disabled veterans. And so it's uh, something that's close to my heart, and we're going to continue doing it. Really blow it out of the park. Now, now we've got the Wild West Crypto Show on board and, and Drew and these guys. Um, I mean, it's uh, sky's the limit. Yeah, yeah, you bet. You know what? And I can't wait to go to my first one of these things. I've obviously watched some videos. Yeah. And it is really something. It's like I've heard you say, so these guys trade their sticks for hockey sticks. Yeah. And not yeah. only are you teaching, probably teaching a lot of them how to ice skate. That's okay? right. And, yeah. and then on top of that, now you're out there playing hockey with this puck. And, and uh, you know, you go out there and to watch these guys, I mean, you can't get the smiles off their faces. I mean, it's incredible, man. It, it, yeah, it is really something else. Uh, you can't get smiles off the face. And, you know, and also, you know, for these people, um, you know, doing any types of these events, I mean, just going somewhere, you know, having yeah. a place to go. And, you know, I took uh, uh, one or two of the vets to the uh, Run for the Unicorns where Drew and I, Drew and I met. Yeah. Um, but we're doing these events all over the world. We need 10 teams, uh, 10 countries to have blind hockey teams in order to uh, petition the Paralympic Committee to add this sport as a Paralympic sport. Uh, you know, so we're looking, you know, probably four, eight, ten years down the road, really, to, to do all of that. But we're in a great position to do this. I think we'll probably do another big event in Amsterdam uh, that September 29th uh, weekend. Uh, of course, I'm great friends with Blockchain Day folks. Um, but this blind hockey is, is really something else. And, uh, yeah, the, I mean, they just – these guys love it. And, I mean, it gives them something to, something to do where they keep themselves in shape – and, sure. you know, after they come back like this and you get some disability, like like uh, being blind or something, which is a very severe disability, guys, yeah. um, the uh, sedent sedentariness can set in because you don't want to hurt yourself. And um, and then, of course, the depression follows and everything else. And this we're really changing people's lives. And uh, I'm so happy to be a part of it. It is really wonderful. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And, you know, Bruce, I'm, Bruce, when you and I first met at the Rent for the Unicorns at the Kentucky Derby, it was one of the things that – you know, we're talking about all these things, you know, crypto and blockchain and all this stuff. It was one of the very first things you brought up to me that you were doing. I mean, you can tell that that is where your heart is to make a difference with these guys. Yep. And then when I met the young man and his wife that was that you brought yep. to the uh, Kentucky Derby, and it was unlike anything he'd ever experienced. I mean, you know, here this guy was, and he goes and he dedicates and literally almost loses. He, he wasn't completely blind, but he can see a little bit of shadows. Yep. But literally serving this country. He goes and he, and he loses his eyesight, right? And it's yeah. like you said, you and I have talked about it. Yeah, he gets a little bit of disability here and there. It basically just sustains him, you know? But yeah. you have no real quality of life moving beyond that stuff. And you can tell, I mean, this guy, he had a life. He's, he looks forward to everything that, that is going to happen beyond that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, totally, it's totally changing their life, totally giving them a new outlook. Actually, the, the man you met, Lawrence Harrison, uh, he's a good friend of mine. I mean, I love Lawrence. Uh, we love each other. Uh, he's lost. I mean, he's probably lost 20 pounds, 20 yeah. pounds uh, since we started. I've taken him all over the world. And you should have seen us tromping through Kiev. I mean, it was something else. They don't have the American Disabilities Act in Kiev. Okay, folks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're tromping through Kiev and I got my, you know, and of course they're vets, you know, so it, it goes along with everything. I got my African American vets and my my Latino vets, and we're we're tromping through Kiev with tap 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 of the canes and everything, and getting our our pictures in front of all of the uh, monuments. Which is Kiev is one of the most beautiful uh, cities in the world. So we'll probably we'll likely go back there again this year, and maybe hit up another European uh, venue, which is probably going to be Amsterdam. Uh, so we'll probably be back in Kiev. I'm sorry, next year. Yeah. Uh, to do that event, do that big tri blind event. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's really something it's, it's, you know, it's not something not to be taken lightly. And that's what I always tell the, the guys, the athletes, because it's not something to be taken lightly. It takes a lot for them to get out there and yeah. for them to participate. They got to lean on their wife or their mother or their friend or whoever it is 
trek through whatever they have to go through to get there. Uh, bring all their love, all their equipment, get out there. It takes a lot of, uh, you know, guts to get out there, learn how to skate. Like you said, most of them can't skate, you know, so yeah. I teach them how to skate, teach them how to play hockey. And we're changing their life, guys, with Global Boost. Uh, and, and, and now the Wild West Crypto Show, Blockchain Media, we're changing their life. Uh, we're doing something that's bigger than ourselves. Right. And that's what life is all about, guys. What you do in life echoes in eternity. You bet. And we're changing, we're changing their life, changing the world. You bet, absolutely. Okay, so what events do you have coming up? Because I know you've been doing this for a couple of years, and you, you've dug deep into your pockets, and I happen to know for a fact you've sacrificed personally to go and make sure these things happen for these folks. So what well, events do you have coming up, Bruce? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, of course, the last, uh, flat, last few major events have been uh, totally funded uh, by, by myself, Global Boost. Uh, so we have some really exciting events coming up. We're doing Central Park the end of October. Okay. Oh, totally, totally awesome, guys. We'll be in Central Park playing on the drink. Sponsors for that, right? We do need sponsors. And guys, it's a huge opportunity. Okay. Yeah. You're going to be out there in Central Park. At any given time, there's, you know, five, 10,000 people up on the walkway. I don't know if you're familiar with it looking down on the ice and they may not be able to see so so much but they can sure make out those banners okay yeah, absolutely. now i always almost always and especially if i call ahead of time the media is going to come in they're going to interview us you, can, you know me i i always hook up who needs to be hooked up so we'll make sure everybody gets their mention but we have that central park it's the end of october we also okay. go over and we do rockefeller center and everything like that during that event and then december we have uh, lake placid yeah, uh, we go up to the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid. We play on the Olympic ice. We do a uh, we do a national training camp up there. It's totally awesome. Um, and it's not all vets, guys. Civilians can play. I like to build the team around the vets, but then we bring in civilians and kids and everything else. And we got the kids and the and the adults and and all this stuff. So we go up there to to Lake Placid. That's going to be the first weekend in December. About okay. right in there. And it'll be right after our DC conference. Uh, blockchain and AI conference and we're gonna like I said we'll play some hockey we'll do another Olympic sport maybe like the uh, the Nordic one or the cross country and the shooting I know all the vets really like the uh, that and then I, I rent the whole bobsled run the okay. entire run guys I rent the whole the whole thing and everybody goes okay oh, awesome. everybody so you, whether you're blind or you're a volunteer or, or whatever you're doing everybody goes down on the bobsled and let me tell you what it makes a roller coaster look like child's play. I mean, it is, there is nothing like it, Drew. Just wait till you do it. I, I know. I can't wait. Let me tell you something. If the Jamaicans can bobsled, I ought to be bobsledding, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you what. It, it's something else. So when I was 19 years old, I trained up in Lake Placid. And uh, it was one of the greatest things, you know, one of the great experiences of my life. It's actually I stayed on the top of the house that I that I stayed in um, uh, before when I lived there when I was just there a couple weeks ago with my daughter competing. Um, but one of the things I did when I was there was work for the Olympic Authority, and they asked me. They said, "Hey Bruce, do you want to run the bobsled?" And I said, "Absolutely." You know, I, I want to run yeah. the bobsled and the luge. Yeah. And we were supposed to do the luge actually at the event Lake Placid event last year, and they pulled out on me at the last minute. They got cold feet. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they something about the guys not being able to see in the blaze. I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll see this year because they were going to make some uh, adjustments to the track. And they said yeah. maybe next year. There were a couple of thought places where they thought they'd go backwards. But I knew from, my, from working on the track that I could take visually impaired people down there. And I don't know really anybody else that's done it. It's something I'm really, really proud of. You can look at the videos on YouTube, you know, blinded veterans in Lake Placid or, or the bobsled and watch. I, I went live, of course. Um, look at the BVA Sports uh, Facebook page or WashingtonElite.com, and you can see some of the stuff we do. It is really, really fantastic. Then we follow up with the New Year's Cup that's in, uh, in Connecticut. Yeah. Um, and then the next big event after that is the Blind Hockey Weekend, which is right here in D.C., First weekend of February, every year, first weekend of February, big event. We'll probably have 40 visually impaired to blind people in here. I ran a huge mansion here in D.C. We all stay, grill out, we'll get to know each other, uh, bring the family. It is, it is epic. That, that is awesome, buddy. I'll tell you what, we had to get this out, and we're going to push this out to folks. And if you happen to be listening to this, 
folks contact us and get out there. Let's support these folks. Let's support our veterans, support Bruce and his initiative. Take a little bit of pressure off you, my man. Bruce, listen, hardest working man in in crypto. Always appreciate everything that you do, buddy. And we'll see you back here on the next show. You're the man, Drew. Thanks so much. We're going to help a ton of people this year make a huge difference with Global Boost and the Wild West Crypto Show. You got it, buddy. Thank you so much. The Wild, Wild West. The Wild, Wild West. West. Folks, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show from San Antonio, Texas at our home station on KTSA. I'm Drew. I'm Bren. And there was a silence. There's no, no Alex. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex is not in studio today. He took a day out to go and do a few things, but uh, wishing him luck that, with that. And well, looking sometimes you have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, let, let me tell you, we, we'll give you updates at some point, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or he will. <laughs> anyway, Ben, Ben had kind of a crazy week. And I know, you know, one of the things that I'm loving about doing this, here we are, we come in the studio. Right. Brent and I hadn't even collaborated because I've been out of town. No, so we haven't have, seen each other since no. Thursday or yeah, Friday like Thursday. or something like that. Yeah. Whatever. And so here he shows up. We have the same shirts yeah. on, which is, you yeah. know, <laughs> it's unscheduled. We've done that more than once. Yeah. But you are out there uh, busting your tail on your, on the new office oh, building. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, let me tell you something, folks. What, 21,000 square feet on the river? 21,000 square feet on the river, three yeah. stories. And so part of that, part of our excitement in this whole thing is that we will be building our studio. We'll open a temporary studio in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And then after that, you're actually building a full-blown studio yeah. in there for us. So. And the benefit there is we just take the elevator down a couple floors and then we're there. That's exactly right. Yeah. Not you know, this far a run. So yeah. A lot of people don't realize we drive in for about an hour, hour, 15 minutes or so just to get to the studio. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, that's why even with us doing, uh, you know, a, a two hour show or whatever has been kind of beneficial, yeah. we're kind of lumping in because the getting here and all that is half a day. Well, and, that, and that's why, you know, all uh, the benefit has been all the Western wear stores in town, you know, their <laughs> yeah, sales exactly. are up, especially when Ranger Bob was on a buying spree. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then now all of the, uh, all of the building supply places are getting a little up, uptick as I bring my trailer and truck and load it up and haul it back. So. Yeah. And, and I tell you what, I hand it to you, man. I, um, he's been going last couple of weeks to the Habitat. Everybody knows who Habitat for Humanity is, where they build houses for people. You know, and my son, Josh, has actually volunteered several times in those endeavors. Right. But they also, all over the country, have these things called Habitat Restore. Yeah. And, well, and you know, I, and as you know, the kind of the motif of our office is, is to make it look like it was there before the other 10 acres of buildings that we've built. Right. And so we're looking for rustic. And so if it's got a little ding, got a little, that, that's just character for us. <laughs> yeah. And, so we're enjoying some of the builders' mistakes because we're buying some really nice doors for some really nice prices. Yeah, exactly. So, folks, for you, if you're doing a project, they have these cities, uh, these stores all over the country. And if you're doing a project, look up uh, look up Habitat for Humanity Restore. And I'm telling you, what they even have new stuff. I mean, you got oh, a yeah. couch in there that's really kind of cool, but they have new cabinets and you know a variety. Oh, I, of I things. bought a bunch of under under mount, mounted sinks. Okay, yeah. That, that the guy says, "Oh yeah, you got a good eye. Those just came out of the box this morning." The guy. <laughs> brought them in they're brand new but he ordered the wrong one yeah you know, so yeah so anyway plug out there for you habitat folks yes. it's uh it gives back because then what they do with all that is i built my mother-in-law's house three years ago and i probably saved 30 or forty thousand yeah. dollars yeah. by buying stuff through there instead of just doing it. and i tell you i, I bought a whole kitchen a little bit scarce today because building is yeah. so wild well you know and it's it's, it's hard work because you got to get out there and sift through all of it you know <laughs> speaking of hard work yeah you know yeah. uh how is, how is the hardest working man in crypto? I tell you what, the hardest working man in crypto, and you know, we just came back, and he'll be on a little bit later today, we'll right. recoup it, but Larry Castro, who we talk about with Stealth Grid, right. um, Larry put on an event for uh, his daughter Kayla, and actually we'll do an update on that, how much money they raised and everything oh, next great. week, but uh, he put on an event for Kayla, and in front of it, he just did a little crypto mastermind, and folks, we had some studs in there, man. We had Stan Larimer of uh, BitShares, his son actually founded BitShares, and then I guess when he got tired of it, turned it over to the old man. You know, so, so now Stan's running it. And uh, we had folks from uh, EOS there. We were right. represented by really uh, the CEOs of three of the top 50 cryptos in the country were at this event that Wonderful. Larry put together. Yeah. Well, and, of course, Larry's a quality guy, so it didn't, doesn't surprise me that that's his contact base. How did you and Bruce get in there? 
Uh, I know, man. A, let me tell you something. Not only, yeah, yeah, it was it was by thunderbolt and lightning. What was really funny is because Larry's primary focus was on the uh, golf tournament for his daughter yeah. that they lost to an accident a couple right. of years ago, and uh, this is a fundraiser. They've given away twenty four scholarships so oh, far. Wonderful. I'll be anxious to find out how much more. And I tell you what, I'm going to give out a shout to our uh, partner Lance Hall. Because yep. Lance Hall was there, and when he saw the auction that was going on, and people had donated the use of their houses right. at resorts, you know, in a couple of parts of the right. country. Well, Lance has property kind of all over the place. As a matter of fact, we we spent the night on Lance's uh, power boat. Oh, did you really? In the marina there in San Diego, in the shadows of the aircraft carrier. Yeah, all, all of a sudden, I'm having flashbacks to uh, Miami Vice. Uh, so. I, <laughs> I just want to know which one of you, Bruce, or you, or, or Don Johnson? Well, let me tell you, I think Lance would claim Don Johnson. <laughs> ah, you know? okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lance claimed home court advantage. Yeah, yeah, he did. But it was really cool because as we're watching this event go on, and there's a couple of hundred people there in this auction and dinner at the end of the golf tournament, and uh, Lance stands up there and calls Larry over, and he said, listen, I've got a house in Park City, Utah, which we stayed in a few weeks ago, right. and I mean just a first-class outfit. He said, I'll throw a week of that up there. I'll donate a week of that for you to auction. Oh, wonderful. Pulled 2500 bucks from that one. Then oh, he good. took another condo that he's got in, in Laguna, his house. Right. And uh, put that thing up for a week and pulled another 2500 bucks. and then took the mansion that we were all going to stay at at the Kentucky Derby. Uh -huh. And Sherry and I went down and saw yeah. for a couple of days. Put that up there and raised another couple of grand. And I have to tell you, I made an executive decision. Okay. You, were, you weren't there on this one. <laughs> By the way, how was Margaret's birthday? <laughs> Margaret's birthday was great. Good. good. She was, it was great. Good, good. Because I, part and of the James, reason, James Avery came through again. <laughs> <laughs> just a boom. I mean, and for those of you that don't know, James Avery is a is a jeweler of note, uh, a jewelry maker uh, there in Kerrville, Texas. Uh, started in his garage, and so he has a a, a shop right there in Kerrville. Yeah, and, well, his uh, main shop. He opened yeah. one in Bernie. He's, oh yeah. Well, yeah. he's got them all over the country now. But uh, but his main the the you know the headquarters store is there, yeah. and of course I'm on a first name basis with most of the ladies, having lived there since '91, and and always being the guy that's oh. Wait, it's my wife's birthday. Oh, wait, yeah. it's my anniversary. Yeah. yeah. James yeah. Avery, here I come. So she's the been the benefactor oh, yeah. of yeah, 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 absolutely. So uh oh, where were we I, we headed somewhere with that talking about James. Oh, her birthday asked. Yes. You. Yeah. So uh Larry calls me at midnight, right? And he's wanting to focus on on Kayla's tournament and all right. that. Calls me at midnight on Saturday night because the this mastermind event, which came together literally in about two weeks, right? He said, Hey, listen, do you mind just taking charge of that and doing an agenda right. and everything else? And and I'm like, sure. You know. <laughs> so you asked how Bruce and I got in? Yeah. We made the agenda. There you go. <laughs> we were on the schedule. Yeah, you know, if you're in control of the schedule, it, it works pretty well, doesn't yeah. it? Exactly, exactly. So anyway, it was a great event, and we'll elaborate it on a little bit more when uh, when Bruce calls in. And speaking of, you know, we met a Stan Larimer from uh, BitShares was there, right? You know, and we'll get Stan on in a few weeks, oh, and he's actually interested in working with us on a, on one of our TV shows that we're producing through oh, great. blockchain media. Great. Yeah, and uh, some great things like that. And you know, Brent, it was a little bit different than most of the things we've been to. Intimate group of I'd say twenty people. Okay, right. and uh, but they were all kind of superstars in the space, yeah. you know, and some really neat things that we'll be able to collaborate, including, and we'll talk about this a uh, little bit later in the second hour, but including talking about the Global Boost Initiative, where right. we're going to take these cell phones, have them donated, right. okay, and we're talking about smartphones, yeah. we'll get veterans to go in and teach them how to refurbish these smartphones, oh, yeah. and then we'll deploy them out into third world countries and everything so that they're mining and everything else. And, you know, if there's anybody that can teach veterans how to fix phones... It's Bruce. Because, I mean, the hardest working man in crypto, if you have a blind man hockey league yeah, that you right? set up, yeah. it, it's not a stretch getting veterans to figure out how to how to rework some phone. cell phones. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that'll be a real interesting initiative. And what we talked about in that, Larry was showing us, right. he's still working, said that in the next four to eight weeks, he'll have 50 test Bat phones, still oh, crypto phones. Yeah, I, I hope you told him I'm ready to break one. I, I earmarked him here. I, I hate to tell you, buddy, I was first to ask. So I'll get the first one, but you, you've got one coming, and yeah, we're going to test well, these things. You, for you us. need to get it first because you, you won't break it, but I'll break it. <laughs> <laughs> I break every phone I got. Yeah, but one of the things he was showing us is by downloading his app, some of the features on that. So if you and I both download. Yeah. the Stealth uh, Grid, Stealth Crypto app right. on our phone. Right. When you and I are talking. 
it is end-to-end encryption and everything else. And wow. so, you know, the there's something out there called the NSA or something like that, and they yeah. record all phone calls. Yeah. The, it'll sound like the gerbils talking, man. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> kind of neat like, stuff. Like the chipmunk singing. Huh? <laughs> exactly. Well, you, you know, and folks, a, a lot and my redneck buddies out there many times are going, you know, well, crypto, I, I, crypto's not got anything to do with me. Well, guess what? You know, coming out of crypto is this smartphone you bet. that's going to create a level of of, uh, of privacy mm-hmm. where most cryptology stuff is a level of of transparency, but actually this one's creating a level of privacy that you know you wouldn't have found coming out of any other space. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, these are a matter of fact some of the innovations in talking to this little uh, mastermind group yeah. that were out there, even things that all of a sudden you're like. What a great idea. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's really, uh, that's an interesting thing. Stan Larimer, okay, who's now CEO of BitShares. Right. Stan was a, he was a rocket scientist for NASA. Oh, man. Okay. So you take a guy like that who comes in and looks at this crypto space and he's like, yeah, he's well, got guys, some wheels. We'll, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, to him, it was tickling him in all the right places, you know. Well, and you know, folks, here again, that's what's exciting about this space. Yeah. You know, everybody talks about the, oh, I invested in something and I made a bunch of money. And, and, you know, granted, we all want to make money. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. that's, that bees the American way okay? yes. when you yeah, get right down to it. But the, the reality of it is, is what's so exciting is how are we going to use all of this technology? Yeah. You bet. And, and, and you know, you think about, remember, cause we're old enough to remember the internet. We're old enough to remember before the internet. Yeah. Okay. And you think about all the exciting things that have happened and some that aren't so good uh, in use of the internet. Well, you can think the same thing when it comes to blockchain and cryptocurrency. You bet. And, and you know, folks, if you think about innovation and all that, and I, I'm an inventor. I've, there's, it's funny. As a matter of fact, I had a couple of ideas I was sharing with somebody there yesterday. Yeah. A guy who was involved. No, in you medicine. have an but, idea. Yeah, I know. I know. Man. I, <laughs> I, need, I need to get the theme park out of my head. My you know, wife you, says, you, you've you know. got the quad processor that you have know, the theme park. Yeah, you, that was, a, yeah, your wife says you have a theme park in your head at all times. And that's true. And yeah. you, you're always inventing the next ride. You know, it's just a question. Or whether it's going to be some horror uh, event or, or whether it's going to be something real enjoyable. Exactly. And what was really cool, folks, if you look at innovation and you don't know what may come out of something, and uh, probably most of the people listening to us, except uh, your redneck buddies. Right. We were around before there was a microwave oven. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Most yeah. of these kids, they don't. Uh, no. What do you mean there was no microwave oven? Well, and you, you know, know? The, the funny thing is, is I jokingly tell some of these kids, what would you do if the lights went out? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. they go, Oh, man, I'd be screwed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, see, folks, the microwave oven was invented because they, it was a new communication method that they were testing in the right. lab. And the scientist who's behind that thing puts his Snickers bar up on the table in front of him between the, yes. the receiver and the yes. transmitter. And when he started communicating through there, the Snickers bar melted yeah. or the Hershey's bar. Yeah. And he's like, huh, what is that? Now, you know, he did get exposed to some radiation. Sure. What I want to talk about. But we, when we talk about innovation and what comes out of things, I mean, it's stuff like that that, oh, yeah. No telling where this will go. And, and that's why we're so excited about bringing the general public to the cryptocurrency party. You, you bet. know, because, the, you know, alternative currencies have been going on forever. In fact, right. there are certain parts of the country they, they have their own monopoly money and have had for decades and so on and so forth. And so alternative currencies is not so exciting. But it's the foundation, it's what blockchain brings to the party and the all of the innovation that's going to come out of blockchain right. that makes this so interesting. And so if you're not involved, you need to get involved. And whether that's just starting to read up about it, going back to the wildwestcryptoshow.com and looking at some of our old shows and trying to educate yourself and and all those kinds of things, or diving in with a big hundred bucks. You, you know, bet. Get Absolutely. It out, get out there, baby. Yeah. You know, boom, boom, boom. Leverage hey, yourself out. Let me tell you something. But we you got to get involved. Segment, man. We got it. Yeah. We, we're we're going to have to take a little break. And we've got Mr. Lou Diamond coming up in the next segment. And Lou's just, uh, he's he's getting into the crypto space. But for those of you that are out there and you're Lou Diamond fans, I mean, he's a big motivator and everything else. Love to have him on. So, folks, we'll see you back here in two minutes. Wild West Crypto Show. Wild Wild West. The Wild Wild, Wild, Wild West. West. Well, welcome back to the Wild West Crypto Show. This is Brent with I'm Drew and Alex. And guess what? <laughs> it's time for the schoolhouse. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> Sit down and shut up. All right. So uh, next hour, and of course, for those of you that are getting one hour of this, this is a two hour show. Next hour, we're going to have the final exam. So I'm leaving you a little bit of time, guys to cram 
to uh, before the final exam of of, uh, of what we've been teaching over the last four or five weeks. But what I want to talk to in the schoolhouse today, and and some of it was spurred by or spurred by my visitation with the taxidermy man. Yeah, yeah. Um, is I want to talk about Bitcoin. Okay. And and I want to get real about Bitcoin. So I Uh-oh. want to have a real Bitcoin I love it. lesson. Let's do it. Let's okay. Do it. And so, will the real Bitcoin please stand up? Will the real up? Bitcoin please stand up? And and part of the reason that we, I think that as a industry, as an ecosystem, that we got to get real about Bitcoin is, is Bitcoin is kind of the poster child for cryptocurrency. The grand poobah, yeah. I mean, everywhere you go, you say, well, you know, like us, we say, well, we have a, we have a cryptocurrency radio show. What's that? Well, have you ever heard of Bitcoin? Oh, now, Bitcoin, I've heard of Bitcoin. You know, like I got a friend that's into Bitcoin and so on and so forth. So everybody knows about Bitcoin. Yeah. All right. So it is kind of the poster child. But as this industry continues to grow and as it continues to flourish, we'll talk about tissue paper like everybody talks about Kleenex. Okay. Yeah. You know, Bit- Bitcoin will kind of always be the Kleenex. Yeah. Of tissue paper. But there's a whole lot of tissue paper out there. And in fact, there's a lot of people that. Don't buy Kleenex because they don't like the the cost relative to what they get and so on and so P- forth. Puffs does have lotion. Yeah, in. Puffs yeah. has lotion. And, <laughs> and that lotion, you know, when that nose is crusty and hurting, that lotion is good. <laughs> that is good stuff. Okay? I, I like this analogy because then you have people that never use. I, I don't use them. I'll use uh, toilet paper. I'll use paper towel. But never in my life have I ever bought tissue paper, tissue paper. So it's kind of like the, the, the person who's never going to touch Bitcoin ever. Yeah. No matter what. Yes. yes. Just because they don't. You know, yeah. and I, 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 get, I like that. That's a good analogy and for there, why I don't out, touch tissue. And those people. <laughs> out there okay oh, yeah so but let's you have recently i've seen prognostications bitcoin up to a hundred thousand a coin you know bitcoin t- to a hundred a coin you know and, and there's people going both ways with it all right and so then i want to sit back and think to myself all right what does bitcoin really do yeah so, so Alex, money. Alex, so, what, what is bitcoin I, I really it's two do? things really it's two things it's a store of value and it's a way to send money cheaply fast the, anywhere in the world, twenty four seven, right? Okay. So it's, it's a tool, period. And and so, what does it do within the cryptocurrency realm? Just that again, just just store a value, a uh, way to send money, period. That's it. Okay, way to send, <laughs> way to, so way to send money means that it's an intermediary. Correct. In other words, it's a way to go from fiat to to Bitcoin, or it's a way to go from fiat to Bitcoin to an altcoin, or to another. Or do another, another currency. Fiat. So as you always so say, it's so a medium of exchange. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Drew. Drew's been listening. I have so, been. Yeah. So there's a test. It's a medium of exchange. All right. And granted, it's a medium of exchange that a lot of people have got a lot of stored value in it. But going forward, you have to ask yourself, where is it going to create its value? And if it's and if and if the consensus is is that it's a medium of exchange. Then you have to start saying, well, where's it going to store its value? I've heard some people postulate that there is always going to be a salvage value of Bitcoin. It's going to be the equivalent of the electricity and and the cost associated with mining to to do the distributed ledger calculations, which is what mining is for my redneck buddies out there. And, And people get paid for doing that, that if nothing else, that's that that's that salvage value. And of course, that valuation I've heard postulated around a thousand dollars a coin. So Alex is sitting over here, and he's doing the old I mean, hand going I, back I've, and I've forth. I've heard that going, argument. Yeah, yeah, I could see it, but at the same time, that's that, that's like you're guaranteeing something, you know? Like, and I just don't feel like there's a guarantee that all that energy cost actually can sustain value. I'm not saying that Bitcoin will crash or anything, but I really go back to, and I always say, look at the internet, look at Netscape and AOL online, and will Bitcoin be, you know, follow that lead? Because Netscape and AOL Align still exist today. Sure. They're just not what they were, right? Yeah. Well, and you have competing it, Bitcoin-esque currencies. You, you've heard it. me talk on this show about, in fact, I've written an article, yet to publish it because I'm so busy out running around yeah, yeah. <laughs> building buildings for us right now. But <laughs> the, the article talks about, will Bitcoin go the way of the 8-track? You bet. And, and the 8-track, for those of you that are really young, uh, that was your personal music back in the 60s and the 70s. And it's they had learned how to take basically a real the real style of of medium of playing the music and put it in an eight track where it rotated all the way around and kept going around. I don't okay. want I don't want to push you in the wrong direction or mess up any time, but 
aren't eight tracks worth a lot of money now? Because they're rare. Well, <laughs> no, aren't I mean, aren't they? Only to those that got more money than cents. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> they are collectible. I love an eight track yeah. player. Yeah. Oh yeah, what, bring Vicky. Sure, them, bring sure, anything's collectible. But, but no. So here's my point: is as the cryptocurrency market fills out, you know, right now we all can admit that a lot of the coins that are out there are basically building infrastructure for the industry. Right. Building infrastructure for this ecosystem. Okay. And granted, there are competing infrastructures of which, uh, over time, one will be taken and one won't. That's why you have Betamax cameras that are boat anchors, and you got VHS <laughs> cameras, you know, and now you got uh, digital cameras, and now you got HD, and now you got 4K, and I'm sure Stanley can tell me all the, all the others that are beyond that. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and, and in that space, I mean, if you look back at it, I've, even Polaroid no longer makes the instant camera images That's that right. for us was revolutionary oh yeah. yeah oh yeah but they were collectible oh now they are yeah. in fact yeah. you know we have instamax now yeah. you know, I, I bought now, one now you have people that have hd and make their own sex tapes the only the closest thing you could get to that in the, yeah. in the 60s or 70s was a polar polaroid <laughs> camera yeah. you, know, yeah. you, know, you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah so anyway so so here's the thing over time will bitcoin be able to continue to store that value being purely a medium of exchange I project and I believe that over time you're going to find more and more coins that are going to come out that will actually have real business uses, uh, real income streams, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, real sales, yes. uh, and so on and so forth. And as those start to come, I think you're going to find that, that the Bitcoin's medium of exchange and people storing, quote unquote, their value in that, they're going to start to look at, hey, you know what, maybe I'd take my Bitcoin and maybe I... Uh, do an exchange over to this over here that's got some some real stuff going on mm -hmm. um, and diversify myself and so on and so forth. And so I have a hard time buying the $100,000 Bitcoin deal. But likewise, I'm not really buying the $100 one either. Okay? Yeah. Um, but I also have lived long enough to know that a lot of these things will change over time. You bet. And I have a feeling that Bitcoin will as well. So for those of you that are sitting out there going, well, you know, I, all I've ever heard is Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. Understand something. The digital currencies were out for years before Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin was kind of the one that because of the blockchain technology behind it is the one that came out to the forefront. Yeah. Okay. And we have to give them kudos because, to a great degree, they're kind of the father of this entire industry. Agreed. Okay. Whoever Satoshi is, and Satoshi's redneck. Sure. And a woman. We're, we're pretty, and, and, <laughs> and he wears a cowboy hat. That's right. Yeah. Now, we're he sure may of wear it. one of those short brim funky ones that some of those younger kids wear, you know. But it may he, not be a tin galone. No, but. it's not a tin galone hat by any stretch of imagination. <laughs> but but it is a cowboy hat. Yeah. And so, you know, we have to give Bitcoin their their kudos. But for those of you that are out there getting involved in this, or if you're someone that just by the luck of the draw, you got you bought this Bitcoin stuff eons ago. That uh, eons is in crypto terms. Yes, okay? yeah, yeah. Uh, which you know, <laughs> that could be a Less decade. Than 10 years, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you bought it eons ago, and all of a sudden you find yourself immensely wealthy because of that, all right. You know, I'm I'm just kind of sounding a little alarm, and you know, and it's not a uh, five alarm fire alarm going right now. But I'm just trying to start educating some people. Of hey, look, that's great. You've ridden this thing. You've done well with it. You know, it's kind of the same advice that I would give people back when I was a certified financial planner and registered investment. Advisor. I, I know where you're going. I read your lesson plan and, and talking <laughs> and talking to all these people. You know, it's it's like the guy that walks in and he's got Exxon. And his dad was with Exxon, and they got their stock, and then he took his retirement Exxon, and it split a hundred times since then, and he was with Exxon, so they're Exxon poor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and and you would explain to them, look, there's there's ways for you to to diversify yourself, because you know all your eggs in any one basket is is not a good dangerous is not a good idea. Yeah, even if it's a Bitcoin basket that you're up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of percent the return on it, um, you know, over time, the market and, and the, the free enterprise system that I hope that we continue to have. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever, I, um, on, uh, oh, on a news show last night, they showed a clip of uh, Milton Friedman talking to Phil Donahue. 
Yeah. And Phil Donahue was kind of giving him the, hey, what about socialism and communism? And, you know, you get rid of all of that terrible capitalistic greed, you know? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and old Uncle Milty goes, well, uh, tell me, what system doesn't go under greed? Yeah, yeah. You know, do you think the socialist system doesn't have greed or the, co- you know, the communist system? You think the people that are running that don't have greed? Yeah. You know, they all act under greed. He says, you know, the, the difference is, is I trust, you know, 300 million greedy people doing what's in their best interest in independent transactions to, to de- be the mastermind of the economy over 300 people or 100 people or 50 people. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, and, and their greed. So, yeah. so all I'm saying here is, is that, you know, there's going to come a time, and I think that time is not in the too far distant future, that if you're heavily into Bitcoin, you really need to think about diversifying yourself out. So I'm not throwing Bitcoin under the bus by any stretch of imagination. I'm not feeling that here. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just kind of telling you there's going to be some great things coming down the line that are going to give you an opportunity to still have the crypto effect of investing in currencies, in cryptocurrencies. But there's going to be some offerings out there that I think are going to have a little bit more long-term staying power and a little bit more logic for, for you in creating that store of value. And that's, that's the problem. If you're storing your value in something that's headed down, uh, yeah, you know, it's, no, a, it's, it's in a crumbling house. Yeah, and, and I agree with you completely, especially with the new tokens and even in what we're doing. And sure. this is a little bit where with Edison Coin is going to be a diversified portfolio. We'll have holdings in several different businesses. Really interesting when we cut a uh, contract with a guy yesterday yeah. who has a patented technology that we're going to bring to market with this guy that may save humanity. <laughs> I love it. You yeah. know, yeah. yeah, it really may save humanity. And listen, and, more and the to- way it does that is. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. What's that buzzing all about? That's the buzz of bees. <laughs> hey, folks, listen, we got another hour coming, but this hour is over. This is the Wild West Crypto Show on KTSA in San Antonio. We'll see you in next a few week. minutes, or we'll see you next week. <laughs> the Wild West.